Hey, welcome back to Rob's Garage Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how I installed this roll-up garage door. Okay, so first thing, you want to open your package and take out your instruction manual. The door that I have is a Steelcraft. It's a uh, specialty 16x9 uh, R16 um, because I wanted a taller double door. And so after you go through the manual, like have a good look at it, right? Go through everything, read the whole thing, and then follow it step by step and this video will help you out a little bit of a companion okay so I put the door on the sawhorses this is the back of the door this is the bottom it's labeled on the side here on the end and the first thing they want you to do is put on your um, door seal at the bottom. So the little lines go on the bottom. They're like a, a T slot. So you slide the T in on both top and bottom. And basically you just kind of work this in. So fold it over and pull it and it should go in relatively easy. Probably easier to have two people do this. Another thing you can do on this is give it a little spritz with soapy water and that'll help. Alright, so we've installed the weather strip all the way down and we've got the bottom part of the door on the sawhorses. And now we'll have to start putting our first brackets on. So we line that up and you'll notice that two of the three holes line up and the third hole well, I'm just going to have to drill that. So, uh, The other thing that I've done is, according to the manual, I've got to mark these out. So 62 and 3 quarters will give me equal distance down here for the support hinges in the middle. 62 and 3 eighths, what did I say? Probably something different. Anyway, so you measure this not from the end but from here all the way down to the other one and you divide it by three and that'll give you your equal distance um, the other thing that I've done is I've taken everything out and then these guys go on the ends they get the wheels in the sides here so they get the wheels in like that so the bottom part on the door has these ones and it's like a single barrel and the other one has a double barrel and that pulls the wheel out away from the door a little bit and as you go up the door these heights get higher so you can see this one's low that one's a little higher this one's a little higher this one's a little higher and then these guys here are the top and they kind of assemble you'll see that later so I put those all in a row I got the screws and the self-topping bolts out and uh, just put them in some trays and just everything else is just kind of sitting here. Alright, so first part after you put this on is right at the bottom of the door on the inside. This is the inside of the door. There's a nice panel pattern on the front. So we're going to line this up. This matches these two holes. The third one, I'm going to drill that out. So I'm going to use the self-topping uh, bolts here. Nice. I like that. Ooh. Look at that. Okay. Nice. Okay, good. All right, so if you look at these carefully, they have numbers on them, one, so this is your first hinge, and this lines up, so you'll see that this part where it bends is like right over the center, and you line this up and you'll see two holes here and here, okay, line it up where it's supposed to be, and we're going to shoot it. Okay. Okay, those look good. 
All right, so according to the instructions, this part here with the oblong holes, this goes on the top, so that's this part, and these guys go on the bottom. But there's no exact location for this. And these get two at the bottom and two at the top. So we're just going to have to wing this as much as possible, and just even it up as much as possible and go for it. So line this up so it looks even. It looks like it's right on the center. Alright. That looks pretty good. Okay. Alright, so the back of the door has that metal frame, right? And these just straight lines. Front of the door doesn't have the metal frame and it has the paneling, the raised paneling, right? So, I have a little bit of an overlap here, right? So, I'm going to make this even on both sides. You see, here's the other side. and. This is the weather stripping. The weather stripping is on the top and it goes sort of towards the front. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push this up against the door or the frame and hold it in place with these clamps for now. All right, so here we go. I put this up. Door all the way. And I'm just going to clamp this in place so now what they want is use three and a half inch nails and you're going to hammer them into your framing a little bit and then just bend them over to hold this in place well, it doesn't look all that great, to tell you the truth, so I'm going to do it more on an angle, and then bend it over. Oh yeah, that looks way better. Okay, and then I don't need the, this anymore, and then I can send my uh, set my next uh, panel on top of that. So obviously, we do this on both sides, right? So... Okay, so now what they want you to do is check the level of your door. Wow, that looks bang on. It's really good. Maybe I'll raise that side up a little bit. Is my floor is higher in the center, so I'm actually going to put some shims under both sides so that it stays level. And uh, I'll check every door as I put it up that it's nice and level. So we're going to cut the shrink wrap off, so don't cut into the door. Just run it along the top of the cardboard, and you'll see the shrink wrap will come right off. And the cardboard will just open like this really nicely. Now you see here, there's two panels here. Once again, this is the back because it's got the mounting plate on the back. And then this is the bottom because it has the receiver for the um, gasket. All right. So there's two stacked on top of each other. All right. So this goes on the bottom. This part's the top up here. And this will be my next panel. And these are all labeled. So um, there's, since I've got one, two, three, four, five, five panels. Um, the three panels are in the middle are all the same. There's a top panel and a bottom panel. So all these guys are the same in the middle, so we're good. So we're going to measure from this edge. All right. This was right to the edge, 62 and 3 eighths. 
So, 62, where are you? And 3 eighths right here. I'm going to flip this over to the other side. This is the top of the door, so each top gets one of these um, hinges. So, I'm going to use my square, mark a straight line. Now, these expansion parts, they go on the top. So this one will line up right about here. So I'll we'll set that there. Line this guy up. Safety glass is on again. So we're going to do this for each panel, right? Hinge number two. Check out where it lines up. Oh, there we go. That's it. That looks good. So once you find where they line up, then we can get going. Okay. good and all right so put some nails in your pocket use the hinge hang your hammer grab your next panel oh my goodness and Try to set it in place without losing any fingers. Line it up. Hold on to it while you walk back. <clears throat> your nail. Your hammer. Hammer on an angle. And the nail over. Keep holding on to the panel, walk to the other side, do the same thing. We're going to check this for level, make sure everything's level and beautiful. Nice. Panel three, hinge three. Right. Beautiful. Make sure your hinges are down. Ooh, this is heavy. All right, line that up. Here. Hammer and nail it again. Okay, that guy's in. So this hinge doesn't have a number on it because, like I say, I've got a taller door, so I get the numberless hinge. <laughs> well, it's taller than the last one, so it's got a bigger space here. So let's line that guy up.
So the next two panels I'm going to need help putting up, so I'm not going to record those, but basically the same way as I'm putting these up right now, okay? All right, so this one, the top, says to mark it down four inches. Let's just so. bolt these in. Beauty. All right, so this part with the slot goes to the very top of the door. The top of the door says this edge up, and then that's that. All right, so now we're gonna put the rest of these hinges on. So the hinge isn't quite lined up properly, so we're gonna loosen the bottom a little bit. Okay, and then we're gonna line it up to the set of holes that it lines up to. And this one up here. There we go. There we go. Nice. Okay, and we're going to do all of these. So now we're going to finish doing these hinges and we're going to center this as much as possible. Okay, both sides. All right, so now I'm going to use a set of side cutters, and I'm going to trim this weather stripping because that's too long. That'll get in the way. So I'm going to leave it out about a quarter of an inch. Just cut it off. I'm going to do that to all of it, all the pieces. All right, so I had help putting this up, so uh, I had to put the door up before I finish this. So this part slides on top like this, and it has a uh, carriage bolt. It goes inside so I'll put the carriage bolt in and it's got a, a 14 by 20 nut so put the carriage bolt on set this in in the picture it shows the second hole let's put it in the second hole and then we are going to tighten the nut down hand tight so you can still slide it back and forth so just like that Okay, that's what it looks like. Now what we can do is put our wheels in. Remember which ones to put them in. So the ones that stick out the furthest are the ones that get the wheels. Okay. So now the bar has a bit of a hook on it. So in order to get this in, what we want to do is put the hook around the wheels, get all the wheels, and then just rotate it. Come on. You can do it. Why don't you want to go in? Is that one down too far? No, the top one's down too far. Okay. Let's adjust the top one. Just a touch. Have to slide the top up a little bit and tighten that. So, put all of them in hook on it and then turn and there you go now they're all in all right so next they say <clears throat> we're going to take a screwdriver and this is going to sit on top of the wheel and you put your screwdriver in like this and then <clears throat> so you want to shim this and it's supposed to be off the ground about a quarter of an inch okay and this you want this to be the same on both sides so that looks pretty good so you have these two brackets so one of them will go uh, up here and one of them will go down here you have a lock nut and you have these things they're like a pem bolt so they have these little grooves in them and that will get sucked into the metal and that will keep it from spinning so down here you put this screw on this side and then the bracket and it goes to the center on this one put that on there and then we'll put the nut on put this 
through. It goes to the bottom one here, right? like that. Put that in. We're going to have to adjust this a little bit. On it, and then we'll tighten this up. Okay, I want that to be flat. There we go. And what we're going to do is put in these lag bolts. So I'm going to put them close to the end, so you're going to want to move this a little bit. Alright, so now what we're going to do is pull all the nails out, so just put a pry bar in. They're not in there really tight. So I didn't get good footage of me adjusting the door. So once you put this guide rail in, after you have the two guide rails in, one on each side, you have to adjust the door. So you want the door to be a quarter inch away from the door frame. So if you push up against the door, it, there's still a gap of a quarter inch here, okay? So what I used is I have some leftover pegboard, which is quarter inch pegboard. What I did was I put that, chunk in between the door here like so all right so I put that there and when you push on it the wheels should hit the front of this so that will be exactly a quarter inch away and you can adjust that here so here's your wheel right and there's a little gap there so when you push up against it, that door should be a quarter inch away and that wheel should be touching the back of this, okay? And that ensures that the door will never touch the door frame. So you can adjust that with these right here. So you adjust the top and you adjust the bottom. Which is, so you loosen the nut and you pull this back, this guide rail back, so you get the right spacing and then you just tighten it up a little bit. Do the same to the bottom. All right, so after you get your spacing right, then you also have to adjust this so there's a quarter inch play on these wheels. So, so right here, you see that little spot there? That prevents this from going too far back in this assembly here, okay? So what they want is they want one quarter inch of play. So you have to be able to move that one quarter inch. So that means you have to adjust this rail system out far enough so that this can move back a quarter inch. All right. And this has to be done on both sides. So to adjust that, you pull your leg screw out a little bit, and then you can adjust this this way or this way. So you do that before you put your uppers on, okay? And you adjust the bottom the same way. There's the lag bolt. You can adjust it and then pull it out so that you have a quarter inch of play at the bottom, right? So after you adjust this so that there's enough play, this bar has to be plumb, okay? Now if you notice from here, from the bottom to the top, it leans in to your garage. But from the side, it has to be plumb. That means level, right? So levels this way and plumbs this way. So get your level out, and then you can lean it on these two brackets, and you can make sure that it's perfectly plumb, all right? So that way, when your door rolls up, it doesn't like pull apart and when everything's level it works better when it's plumb it works better okay so you have to have the door as perfect as you can get it 
So spend a little time, make sure that, that there, there's correct amount of play, that there's the correct gap, and that the whole thing is plumb and level, okay? And that'll make your door work so much smoother. Okay, we're at the top roller here. And so what I'm doing is see how much play this has at the garage door. I'm going to push the garage door all the way in, and then I'm going to tighten this nut, and I'm going to keep the wheel up against here, right? And that way, when your garage door, we have like a quarter inch spacer here to keep your door away from the wall. So I'm just going to keep that at the proper position, and that way, um, it'll be clear of the wall and it won't interfere with the operation of the door. So, I so your door panels come with a protective film on them and you could take the, this off before you put them on or you could take it off after. But apparently this stuff will get baked on in the sun and it's hard to get off so take it off right away. So I'm just going to dig in. Alright, so this might look a little different than some of the ones that you guys might have. So I have to put this in the bottom hole here and this bottom part here. So it doesn't leave me with much room to play. Top hole, bottom slot. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the PEM nut in through here, PEM bolt. Put this on. Then we've got the lock nut. I'll start the lock nut up there. It's tight. There we go. Alright, so line this up. Try to keep this as straight as possible so I don't have to adjust it later. And we've got two lag bolts, so I'm going to put them right in the center. Those holes so we can adjust it if we need to. Push this back all the way. It's lined up nicely. Push the end with the top. Same idea. There you go. Now we're going to shoot this one here. Make sure the, the PEM gets sucked all the way in. So the first one was there, the second one goes here, the third one comes up here, and it's a little tighter to get the nut on this one here. So let's tighten this guy up here. That's good. This one I'm going to need a wrench because, no surprise, because I have a custom uh, door they have some different things. They have reinforcing bars and things that are kind of a problem, so I'll have to get a wrench in here to tighten that up with. This needs to come down a touch. They say they want it level, but... So before we finish this one, I'm going to measure out from the wall. I want to make sure that this is right distance. Alright, so this is kind of a weird option. It has a bracket like this that fits in the track and uh, I'm not real happy with it but I've got no other way to hang it right now. So the bracket sits here. I'll set this here. Two on here. I'm going to 
temporarily clamp this in place Start from the top. Drill this. Let's lag bolts in. All right. Okay, that looks reasonably sturdy, actually. All right. So I have the two on the side. I have the one and the uh, beefed up track. And then at the back here, there was room for one more. So. That's just a regular bolt, and it's not in the track, because the track's here. It's just outside here. And I put that in, and it really strengthens this whole joint up. So, All right, so here we're about to install the torsion tube. That's the tube. Then we've The bearing plate is in the center. And then we've got the torsion springs. There's a left hand and a right hand torsion spring. And there's also cable drums. So there's cable drum now they both have red on the uh, the set screws but they have red and black which they have a red and a black cuz one is for each end right so they will sit like this like this and you can see where the uh, the aircraft cable goes all right so set those here for now so what I've done is I've, before I've put the springs on, I've got my scaffold here. I actually marked a line up there. So I've got my load point there. And I used a level and I put the pipe in just by itself. Just with the, uh, the center bearing there and the pipe. And I leveled it and I checked it over and over again and I spun it around and uh, that's what I've come up with. So I've got a line up there. I've got the two points marked. I'm going to drill those out and then I'm going to install this and tomorrow I'm going to wind them. All right, so the springs also are marked. This one is black. It's got a black mark on it. And the other one is red. Red is for the left. Black is for the right. If your set screws are in too far, you have to pull them out. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen them up. Once they're loose, they should turn. My hands. And you unscrew them all the way so that they slide over the pipe, no problem. Over here, bring that over. And then red on this side. slide that over oh it's a lot heavier now <laughs> so let's put it in this bearing here Ooh, shaky shaky okay that one's in that bearing I get it in this bearing Work smart, not hard. We've got a clamp and we will just start to clamp this up. On with the next part. So we have to take the springs and put a bolt in here. That one to the right. That one fits nicely. All right, so this looks good. It looks nice and solid. So we'll put the bolts in here. Okay, that looks 
good. So here we're going to attach the lift cable to the bottom roller bracket. So here you're going to add a pair of vice grips and clamp that on the torque rod. And then push that up against your frame and then you're going to start to wind your drum and wind it carefully. So wind your drum carefully and when it's fully wound and the cable is taut then you are going to tighten the set screws and there's two set screws for each cable drum. So once you have your roller drum tight um, and the cable is taut then you have to tighten the set screws and there's two set screws so make sure that they're set all the way against the torsion bar and once they're pressed fully against the torsion bar then you have to uh, advance them one full turn uh, so that they have enough pressure on the torsion bars so that they don't slip. And then you have to do that for both sides. Alright, so here we are. We're going to wind the spring. I've got a nine foot door so this needs to be turned nine and a quarter to nine and a third times. Um, use the correct tools for the job. These are special uh, winding bars that come from the door manufacturers use these and these ones are two different ends um, one's a residential size one is the industrial size so this is a residential spring so it takes the small ones make sure that they're all the way in when you do this and of course I've got a roof truss in the way so this is going to be lots of fun I have marked this um, as my first part of the winding, I've marked it on the pipe, I've marked it here, and so when I get to this point, I'll know that that is a full turn, okay? So, wish me luck. Alright, you ready? So I have to put the other one in. That's this one here. This is like totally weird feeling. There's one. Remember to set the set screw fully down onto the torsion rod and once it's all the way down to the torsion rod then you have to advance it one full turn to make sure that it, uh, it locks onto the torsion rod. And remember, do that with both the set screws. Alright, so we talked before about how this was a custom type door. Now. It is a little different, it's got a different set of brackets on it. This radius is a little tighter. It's not the tightest that you can get. There's another one that has the top rolls on a different guide rail and that folds in really quickly. Um, this one is sort of the mid radius and it gives some different brackets, but the instructions are for a smaller door. So anyway, it's said to move this four inches from the top and it's four inches from the top but it hits it hits here <laughs> when the door rolls up it hits so I've got to get this pulled out and I think the only way to do that is to move this whole assembly up so that's what I'm going to try to do so I'm just going to move that around 
This can slide back and forth. I'm going to remove this. And I wonder, I'm out the two bottom screws where the top screws were before. And then we will have to drill into this. Let's see if these things work. Yeah, nice. Okay, there we go. Now, before I can adjust this, I'm going to have to do the other side. And then we'll adjust this. Okay. Oh, no. It can go further. It can go further. There's a second setting. There's a second setting on this. Oh, no. So, see the two holes? So I'll put it on the back setting for this one. Put the wheel back in. Make sure you put the wheel back in properly. I'm gonna put the nut back on. And push it as far out as it can go. And then we're gonna tighten this up. All right, this is it. This is the moment of truth. Is it going to work this time? Or is that something else? Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, well, it looks like success. I gotta go check and see if it's touching up at the top. I'm gonna have a good long look at it and move the door a little bit. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, now I need a ladder to push the door back down. All right, so that's how I installed the garage door. It wasn't terribly difficult. It, it is a bit of work. Um, you do have to be fairly accurate with your, you know, everything that you do, um, but it's not, it's not a terrible project. It's well within uh, most people's DIY uh, capabilities. Um, the springs, you know, okay, that, that was a little nerve wracking. My, my son said to me, gee, dad, that's really the first time I've ever seen you nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and they were it did make me a little nervous there was a lot of pressure there and you know you had to be really careful with the bars make sure you get the proper bars to put springs in you can buy them where you get your garage door or you should be able to and if they don't have them there then you shouldn't probably get your garage door at that place uh, <laughs> and yeah it's it worked really well I'm very happy with it I still have to put in my garage door opener and I still have to put the weather stripping on. So I'll have a couple of more videos with those, the weather stripping and the garage door opener. All right, so if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section. Uh, any other information that I have or will add on to the video, I will put in the description of the video. And uh, yeah, feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel if you like content like this, and I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.